Let us continue with some examples for Markov processes. To start with, let us take up an example of the fluctuating bank balance of an individual. Even for people with fixed salaries, there is some level of fluctuations in the bank balance. This fluctuation is much more so for people who do not have fixed salaries, self-employed people. So, let us simplify the model. Every model has complications, uh, has complexity, but just for understanding, let us simplify the model. Let us assume that bank balance cannot become less than 0, for example, and there is a distribution in income and there is a distribution in spending, and there are only two processes by which the bank balance fluctuates. So, we have income and that is in, in our problem we transform it as depositing or amount credited to the account or amount deposited in the account and this is one quantity and another quantity spending. We call this random variable as D and spending another random variable as s. And the balance is basically the difference is an accrued due to the net differences in deposit and spending, but it is an accrued quantity. That is the net what remains after several months. So, we have n here, the steps is actually months, say months. Let us say ba bank balance is declared once a month. We ignore interest and all other uh, issues. So, the random variable identify, we can say for example, that d the corresponding Corresponding realization could be d n in the nth month. Similarly, spending corresponding realization could be s n in nth months and the bank balance b so realization could be some value b n in nth month. And it goes on changing. If uh, say in the previous month one had some units b n units of bank balance depending on how much he has deposited in this month and how much he has withdrawn or because of spending, the net difference adds to the bank balance and it is made sure that it cannot be negative. So, you cannot have a negative bank balance. So, we assume only one sided uh, random walk in the, uh, in the balance or, or money space. So, we can write in the n plus 1th month or n plus 1th step the balance B n plus 1 or maybe let us write it as B n plus 1 is maximum of B n plus the amount it deposits minus the amounts one spends subject to the constraint that the net should be 0 not allowed to go below. Now, one can easily construct given the fact that the change that comes in each month B n plus 1 minus B n or the transition now we are, we are basically now dealing with the transition as n proceeds n equal to 1, 2. We are talking of bank, bank balance B 1, B 2. So, in general B n and in n plus 1th step b n plus 1. So, it is a random walk of the quantity b along the along this money space. So, we can now write the transition probability. Well, before we write, let us postulate that 
his income person has an income distribution or a deposit distribution in his deposit it is given by P d of some x. The probability that he will deposit x amount is given by P d x. If it is a continuous number you can put as a P d x plus d x. P d x can be a density distribution, but let us say it is a kind of discrete x is defined in integer units. So, it defines a discrete distribution. Similarly, this is distribution of deposits or income I would call right now as income distribution. All the income he deposits. So, this is by experience one can develop a distribution function for oneself by just looking at all your past income. Similarly, you can develop a spending distribution function P d x P s x which is spending distribution each month probability that he spends x in a month is distributed. So, one can define these distribution functions. So, it is with this we can easily see that the probability that is balanced transits to a value b n plus 1 given that it was b n on the previous month is nothing but the net balance is, is sum over it is, it is exactly a distribution the probability of that is spent some k amount for some k amount let us say somebody spends then in order to have this much of extra in that month he must have earned that much more than what he has spent. So, the probability that he would have earned k plus b n plus 1 minus b n and now of course, k can be given as 0 to any amount. So, long as positivity is maintained these distributions automatically take care of the positivity because they are not deep, they are automatically 0 for negative values let us say. So, we very easily we wrote down a transition probability from a simple argument that if, so if, if there is a jump in his uh, balance from b n to b n plus 1 that extra amount should actually be the difference of deposit minus a spending expressed in terms of probability distribution. So, this is just that statement. So, we can see that this now if you look at this transition probability did not depend on the history it depends only on the states. So, this therefore, is an example of a Markov process. because it depended only on b n plus 1 and b n. So, not some other uh, b values only those two values. So, hence it falls within our definition of the Markov process. We can discuss several useful examples to elucidate the elucidate this concept of dependence of states and how to write actually an equation for the evolution of the state over various steps. So, I might use the word time at uh, some occasions, but basically it can be a discrete time is a step. For that very, uh, very often cited example is the so called weather problem. So, let us reduce the weather is a very of course, most very complex problem, but we can reduce to a very simple type oversimplified type that we are only discussing the character of two issues whether it is going to be rainy tomorrow or whether it is going to be sunny tomorrow. If it is non rainy it is going to be sunny. So, we, we divide the whole whole gamut of weather spectrum into a dichotomous situation where it is either rainy or sunny. So, let us say weather is 
either rainy or sunny. So, we therefore, it, it, since it is very clearly defined, so we can easily note in a diary how the weather would change given from today. So, one, one has as a function. So, every day my steps are going to be days now, day 1, day 2, day 3, etcetera. And day 0, let us say, is when I am starting. The very first time, let us say, it could be sunny. I observed that the next day was also sunny, then it was rainy, then it was sunny, maybe then it was rainy and so on. I can go on noting this and develop a sequence. Let us assume further that there may be a pattern in this randomness and that pattern is that the transition from a state sunny to say next day it being either sunny or rainy perhaps did not depend on the history. Anywhere I take transition to the next state whether it is rainy or sunny depended only on the state today whether it is rainy or sunny today and not on the path. Supposing I make that assumption and see if the data fits in, I can later of course, always say that well that did not fit in or rather it fitted in fairly well a simple model would work. So, one always begins with making an assumption of the Markovian character and that is the advantage. So, accordingly this problem we try to reduce it to Markovian character and assume that this is a Markovian process. Here we have to assume because this process is much more complicated in reality. So, we therefore, define transition probability that the probability that it is sunny given that it was sunny on the nth day. So, it is sunny on n plus then first day given that it was sunny on the nth day we can call it as let us say P s s now. We can write it as P s s or P s s. It did not depend on the previous history. So, it just depended on these two values s n and s n plus 1. So, it is basically sunny to sunny transition. So, we can also say the probability of transition into rain is rains tomorrow given that it is a sunny today that will be then 1 minus P s s. This is actually we could write it as P s 2 r from s, but we know that it should either transit to a rainy or to a sunny and therefore, the total we should should be 1. Similarly, I can define P transition to S next day given that it was rainy today. So, so far we discussed sunny to sunny transition, sunny to rainy transition. Now, we introduce rainy to sunny transition noted, uh, denoted by P of 2 s from r or with an arrow it will be like this. Then to transition to rainy on n plus n the next day given that it was rainy today that will be 1 minus p s r basically p r r. So, we have 4 probabilities, transition probabilities which seem to define this system. Many stochastic examples have there are many ways of uh, writing it in a compact or in a useful manner. For example, the same the various representation to this which is also very useful to learn. A, a simple representation would be write it as say today's weather, it can be either sunny or rainy, 
and it can transit to again either sunny or rainy tomorrow. And we assign all the pro corresponding probabilities of transition in this uh, table. For example, sunny to let us say sunny to sunny transition is 0.4 and this will give you rainy to sunny transition because this is tomorrow's weather has to be sunny, today's weather is rainy. So, the corresponding transition element will be too sunny from rainy. Let us say this is 0.3. Now, the other two such as probability of transition from sunny to rainy that is too rainy from sunny that is going to be 1 minus 0.4. So, one can write is 0.6. Similarly, the probability of transition too rainy from rainy that is going to be 0.7. So, in writing like this the column sums should be always unity, but the rows need not be. And a important thing to note in stochastic processes is that transition probability is always defined from today to tomorrow or from step n to n plus 1. One does not have a reverse transition probability. We can also have other representations like for example, as this is one representation another representation of the same could be through over the circle picture that we drew. For example, I can define this as my sunny state and this as my rainy state. Then the transition probability from sunny to sunny is 0.4. Transition probability from here I do not have to index in terms of which is yesterday and it was today because the direction of the arrow will automatically indicate it. So, from rainy to sunny to sunny from rainy. So, we always write too sunny from rainy, this is given as 0.3 and transition to P to rainy from sunny P R S, this is too sunny from rainy. So, this is to this one uh, is given as 0.6. And transition from rainy to rainy is given as 0.7. So, one can always represent this way also. With these representations, we can always write a propagation equation, for example, of how my probability of whether it is going to be sunny or whether it is going to be rainy will evolve. For that, we have to define an occupancy probability. So, as I mentioned, there are two types of probabilities, the, trans the transition probability which is a conditional probability and a probability of occupying that state. So, that we call it as the probability that on n nth day or nth day, uh, n plus 1th day, it is sunny, probability of occupancy of sunny state on n plus 1th day will be the probability of occupancy of sunny state on nth day and the fact that it transited from sunny to sunny only. The weather remained sunny tomorrow also and the transition probability P s s is given here as 0.4 for example. So, or it is basically an and or problem. So, probability is equal to probability of being sunny and the fact that it would remain sunny or the probability that it was rainy the previous day and it transited to sunny state from the rainy state. This completes the equation to find out the probability on the next day. Similarly, I can write 
n plus 1 the probability of finding that it is a whether it is a rainy day or not the next uh, day is the same as probability that it was sunny day today and that it transited to rainy state from the sunny state or the probability that it was a rainy day today and it transited to rainy state from rainy state. So, we have basically the propagation equations. This is a simple two state problem, so we can write down, but the reasoning remains the same even if you have many, many states. We can for mathematical purposes, we can further write the whole thing in matrix form. That is, let us now denote, it is more convenient to go for numbers. So, the state S by 1, state R by 2. So, when we say S or when we say 1, it means subscript 1, it would mean S. So, when we can write the, the equation for evolution as P S S P S R P R S P R R a matrix whose elements are these transition probabilities multiply by the column vector of occupancy probabilities. So, the occupancy probabilities at the nth step are now getting transformed into occupancy probabilities w n plus 1, 1 w n plus 1, 2. So, this is a transition matrix or transition probability matrix. this is a state vector. Even this, these are state vectors. So, one can, add, one can perform this calculation to calculate the probabilities tomorrow given the transition matrix and the state of the system today. So, briefly one can use the compact matrix notation now one can write P W N is W N plus 1 in a compact form. So, the state of the system in tomorrow is going to be state of the system today operated by the transition matrix. So, this is in a matrix form. So, in the matrix form for example, we have the matrix for the weather problem, my transition matrix P is going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. So, my weather is either uh, state 1 or state 2. Once we have defined this problem in terms of a transition matrix, we can easily ask a question of how to propagate the weather problem to a next day. That is from today, 
tomorrow to day after tomorrow and so on. If my states are S and R and let us say we start with the state 1 that means today it is a sunny day and I want to find the probability of it being either sunny or rainy tomorrow from the transition matrix I have defined. So, given the transition elements you can easily see that the probability of it becoming sunny is sunny to sunny transition which is 0.4 probability because the state is 1 plus it is actually uh, probability that it was rainy yesterday and it is going to transit to rainy to uh, sunny transition and rainy to sunny uh, transition was 0.3, but that is 0. So, and uh, because the probability is 0 and hence it is 0.4. Similarly, you can show that this will be 0.6 into 1 probability that it transited from sunny to rainy is 0.6. So, plus from rainy to rainy is going to be 0. So, this probability is 0 0.6. So, it basically reproduces the elements of the transition matrix. However, when I now propagate to day after tomorrow from the Markovian assumption allows me to start from tomorrow and the same transition matrix will operate now on the states. Now, the state vectors are not 1 0 they are 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and accordingly when you do this is going to be 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 plus 0.3 into 0.6, which is let us say going to be 0.34. Similarly, the probability of occupancy of the rain R state is going to be 0.6 into 0.4 plus 0.7 into 0.6. I am just multiplying the elements of the transition matrix with the previous days probabilities. So, this will be something like 0.66. So, one can march forward calculate the state vector uh, state uh, elements of the state vector and then take them as input for the next days transition probabilities and go on predicting what will be the situation as the day progresses. In a formal way this what we have done is we have basically as I said we have we, we have considered it as a matrix equation and that matrix equation can be written in a formal way as w n plus 1 of basically w n plus 1 was p w n and we can generalize it to beyond the two states. Supposing I have a system with many states like this and I have this is today, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So, if there are many states, if I want to find the probability for a given state, I have to sum over all intermediate states. The probability that from this state, if to the transit to say this state would involve probabilities of transition to all intermediate states and if there are s, let us say there are s states. So, state index, state index let us say i is 1 to up to s basically. Then the matrix basically will have an s by s matrix and we can then write the transition probability to a state j as sum of elements of all the it has to pass through all the states. So, k equal to 1 to s the probability that it transited from a state k to state j 
given that it was at system was it in state k in the previous step. So, read explicitly it just says the probability of finding the system in the n plus 1th step in state j is the sum over all intermediate states to which the system transited and then exited to state j. So, it is a kind of uh, statement converted into a matrix form and a matrix equation. This is in fact an expanded version of the matrix equation. This is made possible because of the Markov assumption and in the next we see this leads to a very important uh, relationship called the Chapman Kolmogorov relationship and between transition probabilities which is a cornerstone in developing uh, differential formalisms for uh, random processes stochastic phenomena especially the continuous phenomena allows us to propagate the transition probabilities from one step to multiple steps. Thank you.